Section 8.1 is right triangle trigonometry. A little bit of review, a right triangle is a triangle that has one right angle or a 90 degree angle. The hypotenuse is the side that's across from that right angle, which is always the longest side. And the legs are the two remaining sides. So if you have an angle inside of your triangle that we're going to call theta, then the side that is across from that angle, we call that the opposite side. The side that is attached to that angle that's not the hypotenuse, we call the adjacent side or the adjacent leg. And we can evaluate our six trig functions in our triangle. So we've heard the mnemonic Sokotoa before, where sine of the angle that we're looking at is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of the angle we're looking at is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent side. And then we don't usually use the other three trig functions very much in triangles, but they're reciprocals of those. So cotangent would be adjacent over opposite, secant would be hypotenuse over adjacent, and cosecant would be hypotenuse over opposite. But we're really going to focus on sine, cosine, and tangent. The only thing you have to be careful of is if your angle were to move, the opposite and adjacent legs would also switch. So making sure you're paying attention to what angle you're looking at. The complementary angle theorem says that co-functions of complementary angles are equal. Co-functions are sine and cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. And complementary angles add up to 90. So if we look at a right triangle, if one angle is 90 degrees, the other two have to be complementary. They have to add up to 90 so that all three add up to 180. So for example, if you have the sine of 30 degrees, that has to equal the cosine of 60 degrees. So if we have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, and I look at the 30 degree angle, the sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, which for the way I labeled it would be B over C. If I look at the 60 degree angle, the cosine of that angle would be adjacent over hypotenuse, which would also be B over C. So that's why this theorem works. So for example, if we want to evaluate the sine squared of 35 degrees plus the sine squared of 55 degrees, try and do this using the complementary angle theorem. By the complementary angle theorem, the sine squared of 55 degrees is going to be equivalent to the cosine squared of 35 degrees, because 35 and 55 are complementary angles. So then I end up with the sine squared of 35 degrees plus the cosine squared of 35 degrees, and by the Pythagorean identity, you end up with 1. The Pythagorean theorem says that if you have a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, where a and b are two of the legs, and c is your hypotenuse. To solve a triangle, it means we want to find all the missing sides and angles. So for a triangle, that would be six pieces of information, three angles and three sides. One thing to note is the way we label triangles. We always use lowercase letters to represent the sides, and either capital letters or Greek letters to represent the angles. And the opposite side is attached with the opposite angle. So if this is angle A, then the side opposite has to be side A. B is across from B, and C is across from C. For this first triangle, we have a side of 3, and we have a hypotenuse of 5, and then this angle theta. And we want to evaluate all six trig functions for that angle theta in this triangle. This is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, so that means that our other side, our opposite side, is going to be 4. So then sine is opposite over hypotenuse, 4 over 5. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, 3 over 5. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, three, 4 over 3. And then cotangent would be the reciprocal of that, 3 over 4. Secant would be the reciprocal of, of cosine, so 5 over 3. And cosecant would be the reciprocal of sine, so 5 over 4. For the next two, they ask us to solve the triangle, so that means find all the missing pieces of information. So for the first one, they give us b is equal to 2 and a is equal to 40 degrees. We also know that this angle down here is 90 degrees because they give us this little square. The first thing I do is I always write out my six pieces of information and fill in what I know. This makes sure I hit all the different pieces of information, and then I can go from there. So I know side b is 2, angle a is 40 degrees, and angle c is 90 degrees. So the first thing I did was I found my missing angle because I know all three angles in a right triangle or in any triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So my missing angle is going to be 50. And then I set up trig ratios to find my missing sides. So I looked at this angle of 40 degrees, and tangent of 40 degrees would be opposite over adjacent, so A over 2. So I multiplied both sides by 2, and I got A is 2 tangent 40 degrees. I plugged that in my calculator, and I got 1.678. And then for side C, I set up that the sine of 50 degrees is going to be 2 over C. And I cross multiplied and got C that is, is 2 over sine 50 and plugged that in my calculator and got 2.610.
You have to be careful. A lot of us may want to do Pythagorean theorem once we have two of the sides, but this answer is a rounded answer, and so if we use that and then try and use that to find C, we're going to be rounding multiple times. So you want to try and avoid that and use exact answers whenever possible. There are multiple ways to do this. You could have also said, for example, for this one, you could have said that cosine of 40 degrees is 2 over C. So usually there's multiple ways to get them, but you should end up with the same answer. So go ahead and pause the video and solve the right triangle if side A is 3 and side B is 2. For this one, I'm given two sides, so I find the third side by doing Pythagorean theorem. 3 squared plus 2 squared equals C squared, so C is equal to the square root of 13. And then to find my angles, I'm going to have to set up trig ratios. So I said that sine of angle A is going to be opposite, which is 3, over the hypotenuse of root 13. Since I'm using the square root of 13 and leaving it like that, it's fine because that's an exact answer instead of using the rounded calculator answer. So then I have to find my angle, so I want to undo a regular trig ratio, which means I'm going to use inverse trig. So A is going to be the sine inverse of 3 over the square root of 13, and I got 56.309 degrees. Since we're dealing with triangles, we're going to be in degree mode from here on out. And then to find the third angle, you could also do a trig ratio, or you know that all three angles have to add up to 180. So even though it's a rounded answer, you're still fine because you're just finding the complement of it, and so you end up with angle B to be 33.690 degrees. So if you're finding side lengths, you're going to use regular trig. If you're finding angle measurements, you want to use inverse trig. An angle of elevation is the angle measured from the horizontal line of sight to how much you have to look up to see something that you're looking up at, and an angle of depression or declination is your angle from eyesight down to look down at something. So if we have a statue up on top of the Board Trade Center, we want to find the height of the statue. And they give us that there are two observations taken, both from the same place, 400 feet from the base of the building. And the first angle of elevation is 55.1 degrees, and that's to the bottom of the statue. And then to the top of the statue, there's an angle of elevation of 56.5 degrees. So try to use that information to find the height of the statue. I called the whole height from the base of the building to the top of the statue X, and I called the height of the building to the bottom of the statue Y, and I have two right triangles. We're going to assume this building is a nice straight building here. So for the, the whole height, I said that the tangent of 56.5 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent, so X over 400. So X, the whole height all the way to the top of the statue, would be 400 tangent of 56.5 degrees. And then same idea to the bottom of the statue, so tangent of 55.1 degrees is equal to y over 400. So y would be equal to 400 times tangent of 55.1 degrees. And the statue would be the whole height to the top minus the height of the building, or x minus y. And so I plugged that in my calculator, and I got 30.947 feet. For this one, we have a surveyor who's trying to measure the width of a river. Um, and so they're standing here at point B, and they measured the distance to point C, which is on their side of the river, to be 200 meters, and the angle to another point A, which is perpendicular to BC, to be 20 degrees. And we want to use this information to find the width of the river. Very similar idea to the previous one. I have this angle here, and I'm trying to find the opposite, and I have the adjacent. So which trig function is opposite and adjacent? That would be tangent. So the tangent of 20 degrees is side B over 200. So B would be 200 tangent 20 degrees, or 72.794 meters. So this has been right triangle trig, so Katoa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. And this only works if you have a right triangle.